In this video, we're going to have a look at how you can make your own alcohol stove because I get asked a lot of questions about it. A lot of people are interested in using alcohol stoves and they're not sure if they should go and invest their money into a full setup or, you know, they just don't know if they're going to like it or not. So this is a good option. You can try it out yourself. It's not going to cost anything really. And uh, yeah, it's nice making your own bit of camping gear, you know, it's a bit of a little story behind it. But this isn't my own idea. I stumbled across a video on a channel called Greencraft. And uh, Neil over there, he has a fantastic channel with some really, really good videos, really good information. I'll pop a link in the description below if you want to go and check out his channel and uh, see how the professionals do it. <laughs> but I'm going to give it a bash here now and see if I can uh, make it work. But what you need is an old sieve, some sort of a marker pen, a little tin of some description, a bit of loft insulation, a cutting tool for the steel. I have a long nose pliers there as well, just to kind of help things along. And I'll also have a little Swiss army knife. Now Neil uses a spoon, <laughs> which is very inventive. And uh, yeah, I didn't bring a spoon with me, but I reckon I have enough here to get the job done. Now this is a 20 gram Vaseline tin, but it doesn't have to be Vaseline, it can be anything at all, little lip balm tin or anything like that. Once it's steel and it's about this size, you should be good to go. Now, if you are using a Vaseline tin and there happens to be some Vaseline inside, don't waste it. You can use that to make excellent fire starters. All you do is you put the Vaseline into a little pot, heat it up until the Vaseline melts, and then get some cotton wool balls or little cotton pads and just soak up that Vaseline it makes an excellent little fire starter that you can use at home or out in the woods with your twig stove. Obviously, it'd be great if you could get an empty one, but I nicked this one for my wife and she obviously wasn't finished with it. <laughs> the next thing you want to do is get your old sieve and you just want to remove the mesh from the frame. Finally. <laughs> I'll just kind of flatten it out a bit. That's pretty much it there now. Get your little pot, place it down on top, and then get your marker and just draw around the edge of the pot. You can see the circle I've made there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it about a centimeter away from that line all the way around. I'm using a steel snips, but use whatever you have that's going to cut the steel for you. And you can always leave a little bit more just to be on the safe side. As you can see, it's not pretty. <laughs> We're just going to bend in the sides there. Until you end up with something like that. Get your little pot, get your bit of loft insulation here. And just shove that down into the pot. Get as much as you possibly can squeeze into it, get it all in there. You get your little bit of wire and you press it down over the top. And you just want to go around and press that down. Just press it down all the way around until you end up something like that. Now, Neil did use a spoon to kind of just tuck it in as you went around. I just kind of pushed it down as best I could there. Now it's not pretty and it's definitely not as sexy as Neil's. <laughs> but I'm really happy with it. Hopefully it works now. Um, I do have an idea for a pot stand so you don't have to go out and buy a pot stand. Basically just use three or four tent pegs. Get them as close to the burner as you can and just push them down far enough so that your the bottom of your pot is about an inch away from the base of the flame. And you should be pretty good at that. If you don't have 10 pegs, you can use three or four bits of sticks and uh, it'll do the job for you. The fuel that I'm using is methylated spirits. You can buy it in any hardware store. You can also use bioethanol, which will burn a bit hotter and a little bit cleaner. It's just harder to source. I brought everything for a nice cup of tea, but I forgot to bring water with me. And the water that I got here was <laughs> there's things living in it let's just say that so i'm gonna boil it up see how it boils but i'm not gonna drink it <laughs> 
The other thing I'll say is if you want to have uh, a little windshield for this system, you could use uh, an old oven tray, you know, the disposable aluminium foil oven trays. Just cut up one of those and it'll be a perfect little windshield. I never thought of it, but could do it one, you know, just make it a little bit more efficient and uh, keep all the heat kind of trapped underneath the pot. If you're going to make yourself one of these little stoves, I definitely suggest making yourself up a little windshield for it. The other thing I'll say is just make sure not to overfill it and never use it inside your tent because if an alcohol stove gets knocked over, the, the flame can be very hard to see and wherever the fuel goes, the flame will follow and it can be an absolute disaster. So just use it outside on a nice stable platform and don't knock it over. <laughs> just be extra careful with it, you know. Now I want to say a massive thanks to Neil for all the work he puts into his videos. This one was inspired by Neil and uh, yeah, definitely check out his channel. He has some fantastic videos up there with loads and loads of information. He really knows his stuff. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little video and I'll see you in the next one. Good luck. <laughs>